Hey guys, Shanti Phillips here with a brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday Shopping Video today. Taking a go out today, see what things came out, see what things are on sale. I know some of the big releases today are Solo, A Star Wars Story. I know there's a number of different, you know, retail exclusives of that one today. I believe Target has like a Digi book and Best Buy has a Steel book. I don't know about Walmart. I know also Uncle Drew comes out. I think Best Buy has a Steel book of that. Also Halloween 4K releases today, as well as the new Puppet Masters film, Puppet Master The Littlest Right. Um, and I have a review of uh, Halloween 4K and Puppet Masters at the end of this video as well as a whole bunch of other DVD and Blu-ray reviews I received a review and talk about for you guys. Um, also, too, I'm going to be talking about, too, some brand new Dread Sensor Presents, uh, you know, uh, letting you guys know they're available, uh, double features as well at the end of this video. But anyway, though, guys, let's get going and see what we can find today. Into Walmart we go. And I'm over at uh, Walmart first because I just was at Target and they actually didn't put out anything at all. There wasn't even the standout for the new you know, Star Wars movie for Solo, which I've never seen that and it's 1240. But like nothing, nothing was changed whatsoever. So I'm going to go to another Target next, so hopefully that one has the stuff out. And in here today though, for Solo, it doesn't look like they put out the exclusives if there were any for that one. The one thing they do that is exclusive though is their editions of the Blu-rays don't include digital copies. And they seem to do that with a lot of Disney releases. I've noticed their ones just have the Blu-ray in there and no digital code on those. And then they also had in here that I didn't see last week this exclusive limited edition here of Jurassic World, which comes with these little pop figures in here. So that's pretty cool. That's $24.96 for that one. They actually have in here a Uncle Drew exclusive here for $22.99 here. So like $3 more for this. And it's a Uncle Drew bobblehead here. So that's actually kind of cool. This was actually a really fun movie. I really like that one a lot. Other than that, though, today, uh, this one here, Occupation, uh, this one releases today. That one's uh, $14.96 for the Blu-ray. Uh, Gotti releases today. That one's $14.96 as well for the Blu-ray. And then this one, uh, The Row, which I talked about last week. I like this movie. This is a pretty cool, like, throwback slasher film. But I actually like this one a lot. There's actually a Blu-ray as well. I don't know if they're going to have that here or not, or they didn't put it out. And also, uh, Hot Summer Nights released today as well. I don't know if they have the Halloween 4K in here. Usually, if they have 4Ks, they're over here on this side. Yeah, I'm not seeing that one here today, though. I'll have to look some of the other places to see if they got it in. But over here, though, in the TV section, I think Gifted might have released today. I know, I believe this one was today as well. I'm actually having a review of this one at the end. I like this show a lot, this 911. I know the second season of this is going to have Jennifer Love Hewitt on this, and that's starting, I think it just started like a day or so ago. Other than that, though, TV wise, I don't see anything else in here too different. Into Target we go. Luckily enough, this one actually has the standee out in the front of the store. Yeah, their exclusive one is this limited availability one here, which has a 40-page gallery book. Yeah, see, it's a much thicker one. It's super, this is a very thick set here for this one. It has a really cool image on this one as well. I like the artwork on this release. That one's $32.99 for the 4K one. Like I said, it, um, you know, at... Um, Walmart they don't have the digital code so that seems to be like an exclusive thing that they do there their versions do not have the digital copies in them and then I don't see any of the um, limited edition ones with um, you know blu-ray only I think it's only on the 4k ones as far as I can tell and they actually have an exclusive of um, Uncle Drew as well and their Uncle Drew one here comes with a headband that one's you know the same price for their exclusive one so that's kind of cool so it seems like everywhere is having you know Uncle Drew exclusive so that's pretty cool but they were playing music over there in the section but I didn't notice the Halloween 4k or the new Puppet Masters film at least as far as I could tell it didn't look like they had either of those ones into the quality resale store we go well, we'll see what's new in here. I haven't been in here in a while. Everything in here is $2.99 each or $4 for $10. Last time I was in here, they had a whole bunch of different TV shows, and I found like two or three interesting out-of-print ones. These ones, I have this one, but some of these Food Network ones can be really, really rare. Like, some of them are like super common, and then some of them like are, you know, ones, you know, like really hard to find. I think all of these were actually Target exclusives when these first came out, so you could only actually get these in Target. So that was why they're kind of hard to find. And I, I think that they, have, they haven't released any Food Network shows in like, I don't know, maybe 10 years. It's been a very long time since they've actually put them onto um, Blu-ray. 
but I, like like I said last time I was in here, I found a couple interesting out of print ones. They had this last time too, and I, every time I look at this, it's like from far back, it looks like a real Seth Green kind of guy, but it's not him. But only on the cover does it look like him. But like I said, I'm gonna look through here and see if there's anything in here different today. And it, like I said, it's been well over a month. And in here though, in the past though, I have found a couple different out of print things. Like I found like one Anchor Bay one, which was a really rare one, but quite often it's like super common things in here, but you really, really have to look because you can come across some really different thing. Like for example, like this, like you never see this one. And then they have the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. This is like the remake. And I wanted to mention it was pretty cool if you guys didn't hear that Robert Englund's actually going to be playing the character again for the first time in like, I think it's been 15 years on the show, The Goldberg. So I really am interested in seeing, you know, what the context of him coming on there is going to be if like one of the kids like watches the movie and is having bad dreams or, or not. But I think that's pretty cool that he's finally going to get to do the character again. Even though it's going to be like probably a quick thing, it's still going to be really pretty cool to see him doing that again like after all those years yeah I looked through everything in here the only thing I saw out of print and I already have this one a lot of people have posted about this one is one of the out of print ones it was crocodile hunter you know collision course so I, I saw this one in theaters and I actually thought this was a really fun movie but other than that though nothing really else out of print in here that I came across or anything in here today and this past weekend, I saw a couple of different films. Oh, the first one I saw was the new uh, Eli Roth film that he directed, House with a Clock on Its Walls. I believe that's the title to it, which stars Jack Black and Kate Blanchett. It's basically, though, about, uh, you know, this kid whose, you know, parents ended up dying and he ends up going to stay with his uncle, played by Jack Black, and his, you know, mansion. And it's this big mansion where there's, like, you know, clocks everywhere and Jack Black's character is real over the top. And he never really even met him before. It was, like, his first time actually seeing his uncle and his uncle is all into magic and just, like, real crazy and all over the place. But he's always like kind of nuts because in the house there is this clock that continuously is ki you know ticking inside the walls of the house. So he's always like at night you know bre breaking down walls and stuff trying to figure out where this clock is because the person who lived there before you know put some kind of a curse on the house and everything. So it's basically about the kid and him you know kind of like Jack Black's character showing him all these magic and everything as well as trying to find this clock and there's all sorts of other things happening but it was really cool though to see Eli Roth do this this film because it was a really big film and you know it's his first PG film as well the other one that I saw was a movie called Assassination Nation which is one I really really love that one would highly recommend it it's too bad it didn't do too well at the theaters hopefully some people see it you know this weekend because it really really was a cool movie it's basically though about this town where um all this kind of information was getting leaked. It like started out at the school with, um, you know, what started out with a political figure that got leaked, you know, like the town mayor. Then it started out with school, and then it cut, started getting worse and worse and worse. And they say in the very beginning of this movie that, you know, these main girls, though, are going to be like targeted and people are going to be coming after them. Uh, you know, you kind of find out exactly what had happened and more and more about these leaks. And the leaks, like I said, keep getting worse and worse and worse throughout this movie. But it is an absolutely intense movie. I, you know, loved it so much. If you guys saw, though, either of those movies, though, let me know what you thought of them or let me know what movies you saw this past weekend if you guys got to see anything. Into Best Buy we go. And they have the big standee out here for Solo, A Star Wars Story. And there, you know, uh, limited edition steelbook here is uh, $34.99 for that one. And then the standard uh, 4K is uh, $29.99. And the standard Blu-ray is uh, $22.99. But a pretty cool, you know, steelbook for that one. I don't know if there's any uh, non-4K steelbooks. It seems to be only... 4K, at least as far as I can tell. And over here, though, they actually have some of the other things that came out today was Fraggle Rock, the complete series. And I feel like for some reason that there was a Blu ray of this, but maybe I'm totally wrong about that. But I'm pretty sure I saw there was going to be a Blu ray, but that one's $39.99 for the DVD one. Like I said, let me know in the comments if there is a Blu ray of that. And also Fraggle Rock, the complete animated series, which this is one I don't really remember seeing much as a kid. Some of the other things in here today, though, was um, they don't have it here, but in the front they have Uncle drew the uh, only at Best Buy exclusive steelbook. So that's pretty cool. There's been exclusive editions of that one everywhere today. Also, this came out today for $46.99, the X-Men 4K collection, which has X-Men, you know, the first three X-Men films in that one. Also, they have 911, uh, the complete first season, Gifted, uh, the Freaky Friday, the new uh, Freaky Friday musical movie. 
I don't see though in here the Halloween 4K. I feel like I thought they were gonna have that and I also don't see the Puppet Master one. If you guys saw that anywhere though, let me know the Puppet Master's film. I feel like best, I feel like um, uh, Walmart might have had that, but they just maybe they didn't put it out yet. But other than that though, that seems to be all of the main things in here today. So anyway though guys, that's all for my DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. Like I always say, if you guys enjoy these shopping videos, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Also let me know in the comments below if you know what you guys picked up, if you picked up anything today. Also let me know too, uh, you know, what you guys thought of the titles that I'm going to be reviewing at the end of this video. Anyway though guys, now stay tuned for a bunch of new DVD and Blu-ray reviews. And before I get onto the reviews, I want to let you guys know about some brand new double features which are available now uh, from Dread Sensor Presents, the Dread Sensor Presents line. These are all available on the uh, Epic Pictures website. I'm going to have a link below for you guys can order these ones. They also have on there for pre-order as well now. We call it Extremity, which I can't wait to see. as a really cool cast. And I know Michael St. Michaels, you know, who played the Greasy Strangler. He's in the movie. They also have a, a new non-limited edition available of the film Tales for ha from Halloween, which is a great anthology film so all those ones are up tales from halloween and extremity come out in like a week or two but these ones here are all available now and these are all double feature releases the first one here has a movie here called zombieology as well as a movie called vidar the vampire and all of these ones have uh, special features on these as well this one here is called uh, hashtag screamers which also includes the film uh, the monster project this one has features as well, commentary track, deleted scenes. And I'll be talking about these ones in detail too, you know, in future videos. And the last uh, double feature here is a movie that has the uh, one that has the film called uh, Imitation Girl, which also includes uh, Nina Forever. It also has um, some features on here, commentary track, deleted scenes, uh, Imitation Girl, um, original short film. But this one, Nina Forever, I've actually been waiting to see this one forever, you know, because it never got a U.S. release, you know, on Blu-ray or anything. So, so excited, you know, that Dread Searcher Presents, you know, has released this one on Blu-ray. I've been really, really looking forward to seeing that one. But like I said, though, one of you guys know that these ones are available now on the Epic Pictures website. I'll have a link below, too, if you guys are interested in ordering these ones. And the first one I got here is from Shot Factory, Scream Factory line. It's a movie with stars Scout Terrell Compton and it's called Feral. This is about a group of medical students who are all going on a camping trip to the middle of the woods and they're all getting ready to graduate from medical school. And they're all sort of in situations where two where like um, some of them are dating, some of them are having like relationship kind of problems. And they're also getting ready to like to move on to kind of go into the fields that they're studying. Some of them are going to be going to really different areas and not kind of not seeing each other. And they're all kind of like in those kind of situations in their lives where things are really starting to change. And they're like not totally sure where they're going to go and everything. And essentially though, when they're out there in the middle of the woods, they're kind of noticing that there's like some kind of they're seeing sort of and hearing weird things and you see this weird type of kind of guy out there kind of lurking around and peeking around and everything and uh, one of the couple you know the group of them goes out in the middle of the woods kind of wanders off on their own and ends up getting attacked by this kind of creature type guy out there and the guy ends up getting left for dead and the girl you know ends up surviving and but she's like really badly injured and, they, and the other you know uh, medical students who are out there end up finding her and then finding his body is all he's totally killed and essentially though they're trying to figure out how to say, help this girl because you know they're out in the middle of nowhere they kind of found themselves lost but they end up finding this guy who kind of takes them to, to this cabin and says you stay here and we're going to try and find help of course there's something really weird about this guy but essentially what's going on though is you know it, it's kind of dealing with this this weird guy out in the middle of the woods you know this kind of creature but then, you know, the girl who was attacked, you know, some weird things are starting to happen to her. But also the body of the boyfriend, you know, has, you know, who was killed has gone totally missing. So there's all sorts of things going on and it's not very good at all what's happening. But it's like actually, I, kind of, I guess this movie kind of has like a cabin fever mixed with a zombie kind of film, kind of wolf kind of thing. I kind of all kind of mixed together, but actually a pretty fun movie here. Uh, the next one here, and this is a movie that um, is written by uh, Tom Holland, you know, who, uh, directed Fright Night. He's done a whole bunch of different movies, tons of stuff. But this is one of his early films, and there's a movie here that he wrote called uh, Scream for Help. And this movie has actually was never released before on DVD, was only ever released on VHS, so a very, very rare movie that was hardly seen. I had never seen it before. And that's one thing I love is when, you know, uh, Scream Factory releases like stuff like this that have never really had a big release at all. So it's really fun to see something that I never saw before. And this movie was such a fun movie. It kind of plays 
like a after school special, but like a really like out there, weird, twisted, uh, uh, you know, peculiar after school special, special, um, but like an R rated form. It's essentially though about this this girl who's 17 years old who's like saying you know her her mother just got married to this guy. The guy kind of reminds me too. He looks like um, Tom Matthews a little bit from you know Return of the Living Dead. Like he kind of looks like almost like he could be his brother or something. Like he's got I don't know he's got a real like Tom Matthews kind of look. But essentially though it's um. She's like, it's, and it's, a lot of it's done in like these, this kind of like narration of her going, I just know that my father, you know, my stepfather wants to kill my mother and I'm going to tell you why and how I know that this is happening. And like, she's like, you know, going through all these things and she's like trying to tell her mother and like, she's telling her friend that, you know, she thinks that this guy is going to kill her mother. And like, she's really like telling everybody about it and she's all like weird about it. And like, she doesn't really have any real reasons for why, but then she starts like talking about them and kind of discovering things going, well, he was doing this and he turned on the gas and he did this. And it's like, essentially though, it's like, is this guy, is her stepfather trying to kill the mother? And then like, it, and it's like, that, that's kind of of what it is and it's like all kind of crazy things happen and it's also dealing with her um you know meeting this guy that she likes and she's kind of dating him and but it's like but it, it just plays out like i said like an r-rated like wacky uh you know after school special but like i i love this I, I absolutely love this one so much it was such a fun movie and it is so peculiar and that's what makes it so fun and just like all the kind of stuff going on about her for her reasons and trying to like follow the stepfather and like you know seeing what he does and there's these great scenes of her like on her bike you know trying to keep up with him driving you know hiding behind him and stuff like that when he's driving and stuff just if you got this is one of those ones absolutely a must watch just such a fun film it has on here though a brand new uh, commentary track on here with the st her stereo lives who've done commentaries on the back and a lot of like uh, lesser known movies and I always love their commentaries that they've done and then it also has on here interviews with Tom Holland uh, as well as an interview on here with the actor who plays the you know stepfather in this one as well as a theatrical trailer but check this one out guys really really fun movie uh, the next one here is from Lionsgate and this is the brand new 4k edition here of John Carter Carpenter's uh, Halloween. This has the 4K as well as the Blu-ray in here. And now uh, this was what's really cool though is this is one of the like one of the few uh, you know classic films to you know classic car films to come to 4K at least in the U.S. I don't I can't think of too many others that have come out. I know uh, next month Lionsgate is going to be releasing uh, Evil Dead as well on 4K. So it's really cool to see these classic films starting to come out on 4K. Because like I, like, I, like I said, I, I do not think that there has been really that many others as far as I can think of, at least in the U.S. I know like in the U.K. and some other countries they had like, uh, you know, Dawn of the Dead but and like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but not, not in the U.S. And this movie, though, if you guys have never seen this, this is basically, though, about this kid, you know, Michael Myers, who ended up killing his sister when he was just a kid. I think he was like supposed to be like 10 years old or eight years old something like that you know and he ends up killing his sister and he ends up getting locked up in the in the insane asylum and he's getting ready to be you know he's getting you know ready to be picked up by donald pleasance who is his doctor to go to his like parole he hearing to see you know see if he would get released but of course right when they get there they find out that michael myers has already escaped and because they see all the other patients like wandering the grounds and of course he's gone and escaped and then people are you know along the way are getting killed off and it's you know of course the movie stars Jamie Lee Curtis in her first film. I believe this was the first thing that she did. I don't think there was anything else that she'd done before this. And is you know, it's basically though Michael Myers is you know, you know, following her and she's seeing him everywhere. And it's you know, along the way though, people are all getting killed off. It's just a really, really great slasher movie. You know, one of the early slash, like pretty much one of the, the earliest slasher films. At least one of the ones that really started the whole genre. And when you were seeing more and more films like this, you know, great music as well. 4K wise though, I. You know, it really does. It, I, definitely, if you guys have 4K, this movie really benefits in it. It's a movie, too, that has a lot of stuff that takes place at night. So, like, the big thing with 4K is the high dynamic range, which is the contrast levels. It really boosts the levels of the, you know, brightness as well. But it really adds a whole new depth to the film with the contrast and the darkness levels and everything. So the movie really, really benefits, you know, on 4K. So if you guys have 4K, I would highly recommend you guys check this one out. Pick this one up. 
It has on here, though, the features on the 4K disc as well as on the Blu-ray. has a commentary track on here with John Carpenter and Jamie Lee Curtis. It has an on-location 25 years later featurette, the night uh, she came home featurette. It has some TV footage, uh, uh, you know, footage on here as well, as well as trailer TV spots and radio spots on this one. The next one is from Universal, and this is the, you know, the latest Purge film, and this one is the first pur Purge. And this one is, you know, the prequel to all the, of the Purge films. This one takes place before the very first one this is all about showing kind of how the purge came to be and like because in the very in this one it you know the purge was kind of done as like a test and it was kind of done kind of like the government was testing out the whole thing to kind of see how it would work and it was i think it was I, think, I can't remember if it was set in Detroit. I can't remember exactly where it was set but it was essentially though um you you know the people who in the area where they were doing this were getting paid money if they would participate kind of if they would like you would be paid money if more if you would actually participate in the purge where you would actually go after people and like try and kill them and everything or if you were going and like um just kind of staying there you got money as well but essentially though this is about a group of people who are all in this area and you know where the purge is happening and it's kind of them you know trying to survive and then the people who are kind of coming after them and then the government is kind of watching with cameras and everything along the way but there is some insane characters in this especially this one guy who has like these like like um syringes and everything like his character was like you know crazy mr mr tomei is in this movie as well as one of the kind of government officials that's kind of watching over the whole thing on cameras and everything and they also have like these kind of things that they put on their eyes so they can kind of see you know um, kind of like a camera you know through someone's eyes so they can kind of witness when people are going after and you know killing and what they're actually doing and they're kind of studying this whole thing to kind of like see if this whole thing would work as a worldwide thing of course if you guys know this the, the series you know that it kind of you know it came to be and but like this like shows you how it all started this has on here though a bunch of different featurettes on here about the making of the thing on here showing about the masks of the purge as well as a deleted scene on this one as well but if you guys are a fan of the purge films i really like this one i thought it was really cool you know kind of showing how the whole thing started and the next one here is a UK release, and it's from a company called uh, Network. And this one is a region-free release. So this one is called Miss Leslie's Dolls. But this one, like I said, is region-free, so you guys can watch this one on a US Blu-ray player, a UK Blu-ray player. There's no region locking or anything like that. You don't have to have a region-free player to play it. You can play this one on any, you know, any Blu-ray player, no issues whatsoever. But like I said, this is a movie called Miss Leslie's Dolls. This is a movie that was like a totally lost film. I don't know if it ever came to VHS in any form in the past or of anything like that but this was a really fun movie and it was shot in I kept on I was looking it up and it sounds like it was shot in Florida and I think it was shot in some of the areas where Herschel Gordon Lewis filmed like some of the studios and stuff this is essentially though about a group of these people like these um, students and their teacher they end up breaking down the middle of the uh, this graveyard, and they end up seeing this house by the graveyard, and it's you know Miss Leslie's house, and they end up going in there, and Miss, you know Mrs. Leslie is really strange, acting really weird, like, oh yes, hello, come on in, yes. And Miss Leslie has these like dolls, and that's like kind of her only friends, and it's these dolls that are like in this room like this room with like these kind of like this weird like amulet in the middle of the room with this fire and stuff and it's you can tell these dolls are obviously just people like standing there like real still trying not to move and like so you sort of see them moving around a little bit and the thing is this is one of those movies too like you know they're talking to miss you know miss leslie and also there's kind of like weird scenes going on in this and, it, and it's one of those movies too where it almost plays out like um it almost like it could have been an adult film and they're like they're, the adult scenes like kind of like could have been lost and like turned to vinegar and I'm, it sort of seems like that because it kind of like always starts like it's going to become at this thing and then it doesn't so it's kind of like yes those scenes may have been thrown away or maybe it just like just like plays out like that but it's kind of an amazing movie and there's some amazing like weird things that happen in this movie and like don't read the back because it kind of spoils some things but really really fun and like weird miss leslie's peculiar and like there's like peculiar acting and dialogue in it i don't know it, it, it is amazing definitely one you guys have got to watch if you guys like quirky cult films this is another one 
from Network as well, which is region free. And it's a movie here called Who Killed Teddy Bear. This is basically though about like a like a police kind of detective who's trying to track down because this one woman and these women are getting like these obscene phone calls and it's kind of like threats and stuff like that. And the detective is trying to track down who this person is and try and find them before they can you know act out on what they're saying. So it's kind of like a like kind of a detective film. This is from like I think like nineteen. 60s? I don't know. If, yeah, 1965. It has on here, though, a trailer. It has, like, um, it also like deals kind of with LSDs and all that kind of stuff at the time period. So it has, like, a short film on here. One of those kind of, like, um, things on LSD and stuff like that, as well as still galleries on here on this one. Uh, the next one here, uh, Warner Brothers sent over a free copy of this one, this one, and the next one to let you guys know about. And this is, um, you know, DC's Legends of Tomorrow. This is the complete third season here. This is a really cool show. This is basically, though... Um, you know, it, you know, if you guys didn't see the past one, uh, they, the characters pretty much have the ability to go back in time, and they kind of go back in time to try and like change events or stop things from happening, or kind of go after a bad guy that could be around in that period and try and stop them. But they made the mistake though in the last season of going to the future, and they did this. Basically, they messed things up, so the whole time frame and the time continuum was all screwed up. And this season is all is dealing with the most part about them trying to fix what has happened because kind of like dinosaurs have ended up in the present and like other kind of things. So it's like kind of like the whole time frame is screwed up and all the kind of characters are all trying to go and stop that. And that's kind of what's going on. This has on here though four uh, DC crossover episodes on here which has crossovers with Arrow, The Flash, and Supergirl. So four featurettes on here, uh, some DC Comic Con panel footage, uh, unaired scenes, and a gag reel on this. And this next one, too, Warner Bros. sent over free as well. And this is uh, CB Strike the Series. And this is, um, you know, from the writer of the Harry Potter uh, series. This is the newest series that she's done. And I believe these were based on books. I'm not 100% certain, so I'm not totally sure. Or if they might have been actually original to the show, I believe, because this has on here three different episodes. This is basically though about a um you know an investigator who's trying to solve you know super complex type cases this has on here three episodes and an example of kind of what the episodes are is dealing with like an, you know this one is dealing with a supermodel who died and kind of getting trying to get to the bottom of that it has on here though a uh, strike investigates a famous author's gruesome dismemberment so it's all kind of like uh, cases and kind of complex kind of cases and all trying to solve them but like i said it's jk rollins you know, newest series. Like I said, let me know if this was actually based on a book or it was all original to this series. The next one here is from um, RLJ uh, Films, and this is the newest uh, Puppet Master film. This is Puppet Master: The Littlest uh, Reach, and this is uh, a little. I think it's actually the Littlest Right is how you actually pronounce it, and this is actually the newest kind of like reboot Puppet Master film. Which stars Thomas Lennon, and it's you know from the writer of um, uh, who wrote you know who actually directed uh, Brawl and Cell Block Nine and um, Bone Tomahawk. Like I really love his films. The new film he did too looks really interesting. It's coming out, but this is the the kind of the reboot uh, alternate reality uh, Puppet Master series and the thing that's cool about this too is um it's fabio uh the, 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 i always say his name wrong but the composer who did the music you know the italian composer did the music in zombie and um you know zombie 2 is the name in, the, in other countries you know and he did music in a bunch of different uh lucio fulci films but he came back because this is i think the first American film, I think, I mean, maybe the first American movie he's ever done, but amazing to hear his music again. It's got that really cool, like when it started, this movie started, I'm like, this has got a real Italian sound, and I saw his name, like Fabio Frizzi, I think, and it was like so cool that he did this music. But this is essentially, though, about the... Um, you know, the creator of the Pope Master's dolls. In this one, he's actually a bad guy. And he's a Nazi. And he ends, you know, in the beginning of the film, he ends up dying because you see what kind of what's happens to him. And he created all these kind of dolls that had like weapons in them and everything. And what the movie picks, you know, starts is in, is in the present. And there's going to be this really big auction where they're kind of bringing, trying to get together all of his dolls together at his old house or like at this kind of mansion type place. And they're trying to bring together all as many of the dolls as they can to try and sell them in this huge auction auction and of course though when they get there Thomas Lennon's character ended up finding one of these dolls in his brother's room who you know recently passed away he's kind of in there kind of looking through things 
as he went back to see his parents. But of course, he goes there bringing the dial to this mansion where they're having the auction. And something ends up happening and bringing all these dolls back to life. So everybody that's in there is getting killed off. And there's like these insane, crazy, old school deaths. Like with all practical effects and everything. And like the cool music and everything. I love this. I just thought it was kind of them all trapped in there. And Barbara Crompton, you know, who's actually in the original film. She's in here as well playing a cop. But, you know, and, and you know, Udo Kier is playing, you know, the actual, you know, creator of the dolls but amazing and it's also the 4k edition here looks amazing on 4k you know if you got this is one of those ones top recommendation i i mean i found this to be such a fun movie i love the original series of films i thought it was just so cool to see it again too and, and you know see one too that had a bigger budget and it also to have thomas lennon you know who was from you know reno 911 and lots and lots of stuff and he also you know I always know, too, he liked horror movies because he directed, like, Hell Baby and a couple other things. But definitely, guys, watch this out. You know, check this out. Has on here, though, some featurettes on the film as well and some stuff talking about the puppets. And there's actually going to be a sequel as well, so I cannot wait to see that. The next one's here. I'll put a link for where you guys can order these ones for the best price. This is a Warner Archive title. This is the movie here called The Swarm. The Swarm. And this is, you know, a Killer Bees film. This is from, like, the, the period of time when there was a whole, like, they were doing a lot of different kind of Killer Bee films. There were Savage Bees. There was, like, a lot of kind of things dealing with, like, killer animals, killer ants, you know, uh, tarantulas. There was lots and lots of type of films around this time. And this film, I think think was a theatrical film but then they made a longer version which aired on tv and this one actually has on here the longer version which is like i think like two hours and 30 some minutes i think around something like that so this is actually the longer cut of the film this is basically though the bees are you know kind of approaching and um it's kind of them trying to figure out what they're going to do. And it's like these insane scenes of bees coming after everybody. I remember seeing this one as a kid. And it's really creeped me out. Because as a kid too. And even to this day I don't like bees. But as a kid I was petrified of bees. Especially that movie Savage Bees. That scared me so bad. I used to be so afraid of bees. There was like this tree by the house. I used to have to run by it. I was scared to death of it. But this is all like a crazy killer bee film. Looks great on Blu-ray. want to mention too. They've announced too. There's no date yet, but Warner Archive soon is going to be putting out Bad Ronald, but it should be, I think, sometime next month. I cannot wait for that. This has on here, though, a behind-the-scenes documentary on the Swarm as well. And the next one here is from Gunpowder and Sky, and I'll put a link as well where you guys can order this one for the best price. And this is a movie here called Summer of 84, and this is one of those movies so many people have asked me about this one. You know, if I've seen this movie, what I thought about it and everything, and it's a movie that's set in 84. Really, really cool movie, though. But it's basically, though, about this kid who, you know, because there's these murders going around the town. It's about a group of these friends. And um, this kid kind of becomes obsessed with the whole thing about, how you know, these murders and who is behind it. And he starts to really, really think that his neighbor, who's a, who's a cop, who's across the street, is the, you know, person who's behind this. Because he's kind of acting strange. He had, like, the, he saw this one kid at the house. And then that kid, you know, he recently saw as one of the people who is been you know was killed and so he's thinking well why was this kid here and then why did i see him there at the house so he becomes totally obsessed with the fact that you know that his neighbor and thinking that his neighbor is this killer so he's like telling his friends about this and they're kind of having a whole investigation and kind of trying to you know stalk him and follow him and like planning about how they're going to try and prove that he's you know in, did this but the friends are all kind of like not so sure but the thing about this movie is it's got like a total throwback feel like I said it's set in 1984 it has like really really cool music you know some real cool synth music and everything the soundtrack is great in this movie you know really really well acted I don't know it's just a really really fun movie with you know the kind of investigation and everything i thought it was so well done this is from the directors too who directed the film turbo uh turbo kid which is an, another one that i loved especially the music and everything in that one really really cool movie this has on here though a commentary track on here with the directors as well as a blooper reel and a still gallery in this one but definitely check this one out guys this is one, too. I like I said, I have a link for this one as well, where to order this. I can't believe I've never seen this one. This is a movie, you know, a movie that's directed by Tony Scott that Quentin Tarantino wrote, which stars Kristen Slater, Patricia Arquette. It's got an amazing cast in here. This has got, like, so many people are in this. Dennis Hopper, uh, Gary Oldman, Val Kilmer, Christopher Walken, and this is a uh, true romance. And like I said, I don't know how I've never seen this one till now. And this is an amazing movie. And this is, you know, totally you can tell that this is Quentin Tarantino's, you know, that wrote this, because it's got it's it's set to 
around the time when he was doing stuff like, you know, Natural Born Killers, you know, he wrote that as well. And it had like this similar kind of feel. And this one is basically though about, um, you know, Christian Slater, who just, you know, started dating uh, Patricia Arquette. And, you know, and they kind of met at the movie theaters, and you kind of find out more about there was more to her character with how, how like, why they met and everything. But essentially, though, you know, he ends up, Christian Slater's character ends up finding out about something bad that happened to Patricia Arquette and this person who was involved and everything. So she ends up doing something, you know, going after them and doing something. And because of that, people are kind of coming after him because he took something. Like I said, I don't want to ruin too much about this. I feel like a lot of people have seen this movie, but I didn't know any of this going into it. So I thought it was kind of cooler just not to know any of this stuff. But it's a total character piece as well because Gary Oldman's in here playing this like um, I mean he, Gary Oldman is amazing and like he, I, I I miss when he plays these kind of roles where he kind of gets into it and becomes someone else so different like in this and in um you know um uh, Leon the Professional he like plays these like characters that are so out there i don't feel like he's played a part like i hope slay again he, he plays something that's so out there again like christopher walken is amazing in this like it is that same with dennis hopper everybody is so good i, like I said i don't know how i never saw this before this has on here a commentary track on here with christian slater patricia arquette uh commentary track on here with tony scott commentary with quentin tarantino deleting the extended scenes behind the scenes and this is also this is one of those movies that was um out of print for a long time so this is back you know out in print again but if you guys have ne if you guys have never seen this one though absolutely a must watch another one here i'll have a link for where to order this and this is um from the warner archive as well and this is a uh, perfect strangers the complete fifth season and what's funny is bronson picard is actually in true romance as well and i you know and I hadn't seen him in too many other things. I know he's been in a lot of stuff, but he was really, really good in True Romance. Michael Rappaport was in that as well. But um, this is basically, though, about, you know, this is a show, too, I'm so glad is finally coming out. Because for years, there was only ever season one and two, which was combined onto one di you know, one set, was released. And now, finally, you know, the other seasons have been getting released. But this is one of those, you know, TGIF shows as a kid I always watched. But it was one of the ones... And it didn't, like, kind of like Step by Step, which has just started being released again, you know, the other seasons. And one of the ones that didn't have as many reruns as stuff like Family Matters and Full House. You, you didn't see them as often. They weren't in syndication as much, at least in recent years. So really cool to see these coming out. This is basically, though, about these two cousins who are living together. And it's Balky, and he's, like, you know, from... I think he was supposed to be like Russia or something and he has this real like wacky accent and he's kind of confused about everything it's kind of them together and it's like they're working together and they're like they're, it's all about them kind of dating and having like going on kind of trips and adventures and having all sorts of problems and everything it is a really really fun show like I said I'm so glad that this is you know releasing now uh, the next one here is from uh, Fox and this is uh, Ryan Murphy's show that he produced and this is uh, 911 the complete first season the second season of this is starting up soon, and Jennifer Love Hewitt is going to be on that, which is pretty cool. This, I'm, inter I'm interested in seeing the second season. I had never saw this one, so I was really glad to get this to review. And this is a... I heard a lot of good things about this, and I just was watching this now. This is a cool show, and it's like uh, the one actor on here, Peter Kra Krause, you know, is from... Um, you know, Six Feet Under. He was the star of Six Feet Under. So it was cool to see him on a new show as well. Angela Bassett, Bassett is in the show and Connie Britton. And this is basically, though, about, um, like, first responders. Like, Peter uh, Krause's character is, like, a firefighter who's one of the first responders who's called. Angela Bassett is a cop. And Connie Britton's character is on the phone, you know, who when you call 911, she picks up and kind of says, okay, everything's going to be okay. You know, I'll keep you on the phone until they get to you and everything. This is essentially, though, um, you know, it kind of goes through like a 911 call and then the characters kind of go and kind of stop something that happened or kind of rescue people and everything. So every episode has all these kind of things that have happened, like with a roller coaster and like a baby stuck in a pipe and all sorts of stuff, like a snake going after someone, you know, strangling someone. And it also deals with the characters too, like home life and Amer Angela Bassett's, you know, life and home, like where the husband who recently came out is gay and she's kind of struggling with that and the changes in the house and, and you know, all, all sorts of things. It is a really, really cool show. Like I said, I'm really glad to get to actually see this and looking forward to seeing the next season 
like I said, because Jennifer Love Hewitt is going to be on that. The next one here is from Welgo USA. This is a movie here called Afraid. And this is basically, though, about a couple um, that end up renting this house. Um, I believe it's supposed to be in the UK. And, like, um, you know, he's, from, he's British and his girlfriend is from America. And um, they're kind of, like, taking this trip together, staying in this cabin because she's getting ready to go. His girlfriend's getting ready to go away to, you know, back to America to go back to school and everything. And he really is not happy about this. And he's like, oh, you sure you have to go? And But essentially what this is, though, is the cabin that they rented, unknown to the, only to them, is like the person installed cameras throughout this entire house. There's cameras everywhere. And like, and this person, too, is like lurking and watching while they're there. And he's also is like hacking into the phones so he's like cloning the phones and like texting to the girl as like uh, his other guy and like lurking at the pictures and kind of every he's kind of lurking around at everything and he's also like somewhere nearby as well because he's like spying with other cameras and kind of you know sneaking in the rooms and everything there have been some other movies like this like a movie called hangman which I think might have been later because I think this movie is actually from 2014 when this was actually filmed but um I like this one. I actually got into this one, you know, because there's been, like I said, there's been other ones, similar movies like this, and they're not always perfect and everything, but this one was actually pretty creepy, and some pretty interesting stuff happening in this one. Uh, I would definitely recommend you guys watch this. And the next one's here from Severin Films, and it's two films from Joe D'Amato. And this is, I always say this one wrong, but I think it's like Anthropologist. It's also known as The Grim Reaper, as well as Absurd. And both these ones, you know, are released for the first time in the U.S. on Blu-ray. And Absurd has never actually been released uncut in the U.S. But both of these are super, super, super insane gory films, especially Absurd. But both of them are really, like, crazy on the gore levels. And I think they were made, like, right around the same time. Now, Anthropologist, though, like I said, I'm saying this wrong though. The music in this, I think they actually use some of the same music in the film that Joe D'Amato did around the same time as well, Erotic Nights of the Living Dead. And it's like this super, super cheesy music. I always really like this music in this. This is essentially though about a group of people who are on this boat trip and they end up on this island, get to the island, they notice that, you know, it's totally abandoned. There's like, you know, no one around. They don't know exactly what's going on. And there's this crazy deranged killer on there who is like killing people and eating them and all kinds of crazy stuff. It is like total insane. I always really like this one. This has on here, though, a brand new 2K scan. Both of them, though, look great on Blu-ray. Absurd, though, is one I actually had never seen before. And that was about, a, you know, uh, George Eastman's character who is like wanders into this kind of mansion house and kind of climbs over the gate and rips out his intestines and then you know gets ends up in the hospital and he should have died but for some reason he's still alive and they're like operating on, on him and everything and then um he ends up, you know, the police are kind of like talking to the owners of the house and kind of what, what is, what, like, why you think this guy was trying to get in the house and what was going on. And, you know, his character ends up, you know, breaking out of the hospital and, you know, attacking and killing people along the way and trying to get back to the house that he was trying to get into before. And you kind of find out exactly what he's doing. And it's like an absolutely insane, crazy movie. Like I said, I, I never saw this one before, but I always liked Joe D'Amato's movies. They're like, you know, these are some of the better ones, though. Some of them though are like because he did a lot of films and he did a lot of them too when he would film like two at the same time or three at the same time but both of these ones look great on you know on blu-ray really great transfers on all these ones and they have a whole bunch of different features anthropologist has you know interview with george eastman on here some other actor interviews interview with special effects artists as well as trailers and this has another interview um with George Eastman as well on this one, as well as an interview with one of the other actors. So a lot of different features. This also includes, too, the alternate Italian cut of the film as well, which I think is like, I think it was like six minutes shorter on here. But if you guys are fans of these films, though, definitely worth checking out. Great picture quality on both these ones and just really, really fun movies. The next one here, one of you guys know this one is available from VCI Entertainment. This is the Boris Karloff collection here. This has on here, uh, on two discs here, it has... Uh, four different Boris Karloff films, and these were all from 1968 to up to 71. It has on here, though, uh, Dance of Death, it has Torture Zone, Alien Terror, and uh, City, I mean, I mean, and Cult of the Dead. It's, they also have alternate titles on these ones as well, like Cult of the Dead was also known as Isle of Snake People, and then, like, Torture Zone was known as uh, Fear Chamber, and then uh, Dance of Death was also known as House of Evil. 
And the next one here is from Wild Eye Releasing. It's a movie here called Bone Hill Road. This is basically though about this, um, you know, this wife who has, whose husband is like super abusive and he's like abusive to the daughter as well. And they end up, you know, you know, getting away from him and like kind of running off. They're trying to get get away and kind of getting as far away as they can. But along the road though, they end up getting into an accident. And this is one of those movies where like everything that can kind of go wrong continuously goes wrong. Like, you know, they got away from him, but then they end up get out and getting out in the middle of the woods and there ends up being a werewolf wolf out there that's kind of coming after them but then they end up getting to another house as soon as they get to the house and they think they're going to, going to be safe there you know to get away from what's going on outside then they end up stepping into a, like a hostage situation and there's like this crazy killer guy in there and that's when the movie really picks up and it's kind of like them continuously throughout this movie running into horrible situations and then trying to you know survive and figure out what they're going to do this is actually really really well done this is from director uh, Todd Sheets here and this one has like I said this is the unrated director's cut of this one. The next one here is from Film Movement. This is the film that Ozio Argento directed here called Scarlet Diva. I'm just kind of covering this up just so no one says anything. But it's this is the film that she directed. I think this is from 2000, and it was actually shot digitally. So the movie, you know, they fully restored this film to put it onto Blu-ray because I think it was shot on like mini DV tapes back then. And it's also kind of plays and parallels to her life because she was putting a lot of stuff that was going on in her life at the time in this. So there's a whole lot of stuff like that in there. It's basically her character as an actress, and she's kind of struggling with you know there's like addiction that she's going through in this movie and like stuff you know some of it was stuff that she went through other stuff was you know different you know for the movie because she's playing a different person but it was kind of like that and all sorts of stuff and it's kind of like all like a downward spiral to her the character she plays is having some real problems and everything this is actually a pretty cool movie like i said i remember seeing this one when this first came out i hadn't seen this one in years but this has on here though uh two commentary tracks one from 2002 one from 2018 it has on here though uh, ozzy argento interview a making of on here and then original release promos as well on this and the next one here is from Strand Releasing. It's a movie here called The Misinterpretist or Misantertist. I don't know how, I honestly do not know how to say that at all. But this is basically, though, a movie set kind of in an alternate reality. And this is directed by Bruce LaBruce. And this is basically, though, about a like this you know group of women that are like a whole group of women that like are man hating women that have this kind of compound that they're all in together and um they end up in the beginning of this movie this one guy was injured who was this soldier and he ends up seeing two of the girls who are out front and they kind of see him injured and they're like they want to help him but they know that it's like forbidden and everything so they end up hiding him in the basement and kind of hoping that no one ends up finding him and you kind of find out in this movie too more about like the woman who's like the head of this group and like kind of what they're planning and and what the, what exactly is going on here and exactly more about the soldier and how he got here is a really quirky you know out there trippy trippy movie here the next one here is from Time Life, and this is the 50th anniversary special here of the Carol Burnett Show. And this I just wanted to let you guys know this one was available. This has a whole bunch of special guests in this on here. It has Vicki Lawrence, Jim Carrey, Stephen Colbert, uh, Harry Connick Jr., Bill Hader, Jay Leno, Jane Lynch, Maya Rudolph, Martin Short. So a whole bunch of different people on here. As well as some exclusive features on here as well on this. But if you guys are a fan of Cara Burnett Show, I want to you guys know about this 50th anniversary special here. The last one here, I just have the disc. This is a movie called The Church. This is going to be you know, releasing on, I think it's like the 15th. No, when, when is this exactly released? Let me see on here. It's um, I know October 5th. It's going to have limited theatrical run for one week. And I'll link to their um, Facebook page. But it's a movie here called The Church, which stars Bill Mosley. Uh, Clint Howard is in this movie. Um, it's basically about Bill Mosley, who works at this church. And it's like this church is like he's a, the pastor of the church. And the church is like kind of not doing well. And um, everybody kind of wants to buy up the land because it's like a really area where they want to build stores and stuff like that. It's like land developers, everything want to buy it up. And like, you know, they're coming to Bill Mosley's character and saying like, if you, if you leave here, we're going to get you this huge church. You're going to be able to build up a whole new place. And, you know, and that they're kind of trying to talk him into doing it. But, you know, this church, though, there's something all odd going on. And anybody that kind of wants to get in the way of this, like, you know, bad things start to happen and people start dying off and everything. But Bill Mosley in here is, like I said, is playing the pastor and playing like kind of a different role for him, I thought. I thought he did a really good job in this one. But it's kind of like, you know, he kind of opens himself up to all sorts of problems when he's 
thinking about the idea of actually taking up on this offer and you know selling the church. But anyway, though, guys, that's all for the review portion of this video. Thanks again for watching, subscribing, and I'll see you guys later.